Transforming between a big sword and shield and a giant swinging axe, the charge blade is a fantastic weapon which offers a great amount of versatility and actually a lot of mobility as well, offering two main schools or playstyles that you can freely switch between and utilize depending on the situation at hand. I'm Light It Up Dan, and on the channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs, including an absolute ton of Monster Hunter World. I focus on producing content that aims to reduce the overwhelm and the unknown of the game. If you haven't caught any of the event roundups or weapon overviews, I highly recommend them. There's something there for everyone. A massive thank you to all of you who have really shown up and got us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel. As the majority of you are returning, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. And with that said, let's get to it. Charge Blade's default mode is a giant sword and shield in comparison to the regular sword and shield weapon. Your regular attack is a three hit combo string with the Y button, which swings your sword three times in succession, nothing too complicated here and deals some pretty decent damage. You'll notice that as you're connecting your sword swing attacks, the files in the top left corner just underneath your sharpness start changing colour. This is because your sword attacks add charge to your weapon. Yeah, the charge blade, right? You'll need to charge your files to effectively store this charged energy. This is best done when the files are orange, as if you go further than this over to red, your sword becomes overcharged and will actually bounce off when you're trying to attack. You can also initiate your three hit combo with the forward slash. By pressing Y and B together, you will propel yourself forward a little bit when you start the combo, following up with the regular second and third hit in the string. By tilting the left stick and hitting B, you can do a sliding slash after various other attacks, allowing you to pivot whilst doing quite a strong quick attack. This is one of your bread and butter abilities which will allow you to keep up your damage whilst also manoeuvring your character letting you effectively and stylishly pivot during the fight. The shield isn't just for decoration, you can block by holding right trigger, which will allow you to guard attacks in front of you. Suffice to say that this is not an omnidirectional block, it will only guard attacks that are directly in front of you. In sword and shield form, we know how to do our basic combo string, attacks that allow us to pivot, and that they're charging up our weapon. Once we've stored this charge and stored the files, what do we do with these files now? You'll notice the shield symbol next to the files and the sword symbol symbol as well. Firstly, what you can do is you can charge up your shield using the files that you have stored. After any combo opening attack, you can press Y and B, the shield thrust, Y and B again, the amped element discharge, followed up with right trigger elemental round slash to cancel out the attack that you were just about to fire out, redirecting the weapon to charge up the shield using the stored files. Doing so immediately makes your shield stronger, giving you a free guard too. And also, very importantly, it gives you access access to various attacks that you didn't have before, essentially unlocking the true charge blade. When you do charge your files by guarding and pressing B, with a charged up shield you're able to press Y to start charging up your sword. Wait until it clicks inside into the shield to let go, which will unleash the condensed element slash, a powerful sword attack, which will charge up your sword. Do note that this doesn't take up any files, it just requires that your shield is charged first. I know, it's a lot to take in. There is a lot going on with the weapon. The reason for charging up your sword is because each sword swing you do after that will do a small amount of file explosion damage. Free damage, basically. It also gives your sword mind's eye, so it will no longer bounce off any parts. Useful for any monsters that can be a bit annoying when they've got hard parts or they harden up, etc. And also allows you to overcharge your weapon so you no longer bounce off. Not that you'd really want to for any reason, but you can. Another very important attack you're going to be using a lot, probably more than anything else with a charge blade, is holding down B to just do a charged attack. This, when fully charged, when properly unleashed, hits twice and adds a lot of file charge energy. Depending on if you've got three focus or not will sort of change how much you need to do these, but effectively a full charge attack and a few regular hits, or maybe a couple of charge attacks and one or two regular hits, is going to fully charge your file energy, so you can store it and get all five files. Once you've charged up your shield, and whether you charge up your sword or not, which is kind of up to you, I like to do so, you're going to want to recharge your files up again, which you now know how to do. Remember how we stored the files into the shield to charge up the shield? We're going to do that combo once again. 
Initiate an attack, press Y and B for your shield thrust, then Y and B once more for a super amped element discharge this time, and watch as you swing your crazy axe form charge blade into the monster, unloading all of those files that you've got stored up for mega damage. You're going to want to make sure that you connect with the actual melee hits, as that is where a very large portion of this damage is going to come from. Not taking into account you can just turn your weapon into the axe form and swing it around, this was pre I spawn the charge blade. Build file charge, charge files, store files in shield, build file charge again, store files, unleash SAED. Of course between that swinging your sword around, dealing damage like that, maneuvering your character around the battlefield, blocking attacks when you need to, and if you want to turning into axe mode and swinging that around as well for a good bit of damage. Post I spawn however, we've got savage axe. This is my preferred way to play the charge blade and what I was referring to earlier when I said there's two schools or two playstyles. I bet you thought I meant between the sword and board and the axe forms. Nah. There's old school SAED and then there's Savage Axe. You can mix the two together as there is some cross pollination with a bunch of the attacks being pretty modular. Setting up Savage Axe requires much of the same. Build up charge energy by landing your sword swings and your charge attack. Charge the files up but then instead of storing them into your shield which you don't need to do you can skip that stage. You go into your amped element discharge again. One regular attack, Y and B and then Y and B again, and this time pressing left trigger to do the savage axe slash. Congratulations, you now have a giant pizza cutter. This thing is badass. You'll see the savage axe symbol next to your files, and whilst you don't need to have your sword or shield charged, you definitely should charge your shield first as that adds additional damage, I believe 10%, to all axe attacks including savage axe. I know we've not really covered the axe mode at all, but if you've messed around with it, savage axe is essentially doing the regular axe attacks. You can get into this mode and just keep hitting Y to just wail away, slicing it up and down with these big chonky swings, but this time in Savage Axe mode, it's going to rip and tear through. If this is the only way that you utilize Savage Axe mode, and this is the Charge Blade school that you subscribe to for your main damage output, you are going to be very effective. This is a great baseline to get to, so you can have this as a foundation that you can build off of. I say this because in addition to your Y attacks in Savage Axe form, you've also got access to a string of B combos that do the elemental discharge combo string. From 1 to 2 to the super amped element discharge that we've seen from the original school. These attacks consume your files each time you use them, with a super amped element discharge unloading the rest of them that you've got left. Which, with a full B combo, will be one file used up, then another, and then all three at the end. This is fantastic, it's super good damage, and it's modular, so you can mix these with the Y attacks as well. You can go go between the rising slash with Y into element discharge 2 with B, looping it until you run out of files. I believe this is the method to deal optimal damage with Savage Axe mode. God damn does it look stylish as well, you look so good doing this. Do keep in mind that regardless of how you expend your files, once you've done so, that Savage Axe mode will be finished. Meaning to initiate it again you'll have to build up files to then do the Savage Axe transform attack. You can top up your files before you finish expending them all, as going back into sword and board form won't deactivate Savage Axe from being on your weapon. Only expending all the files will do that. Whilst in sword and board form, it's definitely worth practicing some of your mobility attacks that you can do. Whether it's your forward slash to initiate a combo, your B sliding slash you can do after various attacks, and your A hops that you can do in between various attacks as well. Have a little play around and see which ones you can do when, you'll get a nice feel for it and know which ways that you can move. Effectively, when you can use hops, you can only move side to side. With the sliding slashes, you can move forward, backwards, left or right. With some practice, you'll be able to maneuver around the field while staying in sword and board form, which can be really useful to keep your damage up, and looks goddamn stylish as anything. When jumping off a ledge, if you use right trigger to do your transform attack, it'll switch your weapon into the opposite mode of whatever it's in. From sword and shield, you'll go into axe and vice versa. The axe hit is a nice strong clobber which you'll also go straight into from sheathed. Both are great for mounts and opening up a combo. Charge Blade shouldn't be utilized to ledge punish particularly. That direct axe transformation attack is really powerful from the ground as well. I use that as an opener or a gap closer against monsters when I'm running up to them. The only reason I've not really talked about axe mode too much is because most of it I save for savage axe form. I do still go into axe form outside of savage axe here and there, but mostly only the transformation opening attack. But 
minus the pizza cutter, the attacks are essentially the same. Keep in mind that when in axe form, if you tilt the left stick forward whilst you press Y, you'll do a big run up and a big gap closing swing. This is fantastic to close up on the enemy. When you're in position, let go of left stick before you hit Y so you don't move yourself out. Whew, we're nearly there. There's one more thing I want to talk about in terms of the charge blade mechanically speaking. Then we can take a look at what skills are useful for the weapon and which charge blades are pretty cool for you to craft. Let's talk about guard points. There are various attacks you can do which will see your shield being placed in front of your character. These can be both at the beginning of an attack or at the end of an attack and here are some examples. The third hit in the Y combo string spinning slash ends with your shield in front of you. Same for the left stick and B sliding slash attacks as well. But the quickest and most easy to activate is one that's at the start of an attack and this will be your axe transformation attack from sword and shield mode. This is called morph slash and you can do it by pressing right trigger and Y. Here you can see the guard points at the start when you're loading your sword into your shield and the shield's held out in front of you. Again, this is by far the easiest to time as you can reactively do it right before an attack rather than trying to perfectly time a sliding slash or the end of your Y combo to do it. You'll do that by accident more than anything. So what's the point of guard points? Why would you want to do this rather than just blocking when you can hold right trigger to hold up your shield? Well, anything that's blocked with a guard point actually gives you an innate plus two guard. This means with a charged shield, doing a guard point gives you four guard without any added from your gear, which you're going to want to do as the break points for guard are at the odd numbers. You don't want to be on an even number. As in two guard is the same as one, four is the same as three, etc. In addition to this, you do generate a small amount of charge enemy when you do get a guard point off. Nothing really to write home about, but does add up. But probably more important than the previous two things is that depending on where you are in a combo, getting access to a guard point via the morph slash attack is going to allow you to block things a lot quicker than if you were to just go and hold up your shield. It takes longer to go from an attack to holding up your shield than it does going from an attack into the morph slash. So it allows you to be a lot quicker, a lot more fluid, making snap decisions to quickly block attacks whilst you're in the middle of combos. That essentially is what guard points are for and why they're useful. You don't have to do them, they are completely optional, they just help you stay in the action for longer. If you randomly block attacks when you're not holding up your guard and you were wondering what that is, you just did a guard point. Now you know. There are many different skills that are very beneficial to the charge blade and it depends on your playstyle and what you want to sort of prioritize. Getting focus 3 will allow you to charge up your weapon much quicker, cutting down on the faff to get your 5 files. Power Prolonger 3 will keep your shield charged up for longer, which is super, super helpful. You may want to improve on the guarding functionality, so you might want to increase guard up to 1, 3, 5, whatever really. 3 Offensive Guard will give you a 15% damage increase for a little while every time you get a perfect block off. Guard Up gives you the switch to allow you to block otherwise unblockable attacks, which isn't every single unblockable attack. If your Charge Blade has impact files, then Artillery will benefit from that and increase the damage that they do. If it has Elemental files, then and the file damage goes completely off the elemental damage. If you want to increase that, you can take the elemental damage skills to increase that weapon's elemental damage. Capacity boost adds a sixth file regardless of which file type it is, which can be useful as well. Charge Blade has a really long sheathing animation, so quick sheath can be very helpful at two levels or even three if you can manage it. And if you do like using Savage Axe, that does eat away at sharpness, so anything that preserves that can be very helpful as well. So just a few things really, right? As you can see, there are a lot of skills that can be very beneficial for the charge blade. You're going to have to really pick and choose what you want. Okay, this video is already getting very long. Let's quickly take a look at which charge blades are a great option for you to get up and go with. The Frostfang Barrier, Raging Wolf Fang is a fantastic choice with great raw, purple sharpness, 15% affinity, and a tremendous amount of ice elemental on it as well. It does use impact files rather than elemental files, so just be aware of that. Being a direct craft from that Frostfang Barrier event where you can get every everything from just running that single quest makes this a fantastic option for any of the 14 weapons. Equally, the Stygian, Zenoga, Brimstrom, Drake Claw is a fantastic direct craft from running the event as well. Solid Raw with a chunk of purple sharpness, Dragon Elemental with average Elder Seal, a level 2 gem slot and impact files. Quick, cheap, cheerful. The Black Eagle from Every Hunter's Dream 3 is definitely something you should get as well. This has the best aesthetics in the game. Unfortunately, Low Raw, a small amount of purple sharpness 
Darkness, Good Affinity, and Thunder Elemental, with two level 1 gem slots and power element files. It can, however, be very easily upgraded to a better version of it, bringing the raw damage more in line with the other options, increasing to a massive chunk of purple sharpness, and slightly increasing the Thunder Elemental too. Absolutely one for the collection, if nothing else, this is gorgeous. The Guild Palace disc from the 50 Shades of White quest is another fantastic direct craft where you get everything from running that single event. Good raw, white sharpness, 10% affinity, a level 3 gem slot, and plus 30% defense bonus, utilizing impact files rather than elemental. One to get as soon as you can after entering Iceborne, especially for charge blade, but for any of the weapons really. And now the top tier cream of the crop, not including the siege weapons though, so if you are interested in Safi or the Kulv Taroth weapons, that's something else to look into. The fantastic Alatreon Morphblade is a great amount of raw, massive purple sharpness, humongous amount of dragon elemental with low elder seal, two level two gem slots with power element file. A great choice. One of my personal favorites for every weapon that I've crafted of it, the furious Rajang Tree Demon Lord Blade. Another direct craft with great raw, good purple sharpness, 15% affinity, a good chunk of thunder elemental, and utilizes power element file. Such a great plug and play. Grab it as soon as you can, as soon as you're able to defeat furious Rajang, and enjoy the smooth sailing of just a really powerful weapon that's going to see you through. Love it. Likely the second best charge blade you're going to use outside of the siege weapons, the Raging Bracadio's Light Break Charge Blade. Great raw purple sharpness, 210 blast status element, a fantastic element, a level 4 and level 3 gem slot, and utilizes impact files. A 10 out of 10 weapon. Get all the Raging Bracky weapons as soon as you can. They are just so good. And of course goes without saying, the upgraded Fatalis True Fatalis Charger is the best charge blade in the game. This, like all Fatalis weapons, is an absolute monster and is going to shred. There are some other cool options to look at, like the Zenoga one, the Rathalos charge blade, the Rathian charge blades. They're all really cool. Definitely take a look at those as well. Have you tried the charge blade before? Are you going to give it a go after watching this now? Are there any additional tips I've not mentioned in this video? Let us know in the comments below so we can all learn from each other as a community. I would love to hear from you. As mentioned at the start, you folks have really turned up and got us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel here. As the majority of you are returning, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe, and the Discord is open to all of you, so let's group up, get some hunts together with myself and the squad. We do tons of multiplayer hunts on there and during the live streams on Twitch too. I'll hopefully catch you there, but until next time, I'll see you in the new world.